All right, we're now joined by Brian Tishy. How are you today, Brian? Good, everything's cool. How are you? Oh, doing fantastic. Excited about Silverthorn. I was just checking out the video again. That's quite a project. Of course, people know you drumming forever, you know, with White Snake and Ozzy and Slash and Billy Idol and Forner and Dead Daisies and all that. You've had a long, long career. Tell us how it's all led to Silverthorn, how it all came together. Uh, yeah, well, well, thank you for your kind words, and thanks for digging the, the, the single. Uh, we're, we're psyched to have it out and get this thing rolling now. So, yeah, thanks for that. But, uh, yeah, Silverthorn, uh, yeah, has nothing to do with uh, the, the other bands you mentioned uh, that I've been in, but uh, it's a brand new thing that we got together last year, uh, myself and uh, singer, guitar player Pete Shoulder, and uh, also uh, bassist Daniel Spree. We uh, we got together. To, uh, Pete has been, mostly Pete and myself got together last year and did some writing, and recording, and the uh, interesting side of that is um, a bunch of years ago on tour with White Snake, Pete had a band. Uh, we were we were touring in the UK, and his band called The Union was opening up, and uh, we did meet, but we didn't really hang out and get to know each other or anything. But I, I just remember going into the the venues and. I'd hear them playing, and I was like, man, I, you know, that singer sounds killer. He's a great singer. But that was about it. And a few years later, back at, uh, in 2016, I was doing a project with uh, the DeLeo brothers from Stone Temple Pilots, and we had uh, recorded a bunch of music and in hopes of getting a singer, and STP didn't have a singer at the time. They were kind of in the middle of searching for somebody, unsure if they would find the right guy. Pete came along and just had this amazing voice, and we all agreed, man, he's, he's the guy to, to, to front this, this new thing we're doing. So we, we ultimately recorded with Pete. He came out, and uh, we basically made a record. Somewhere in that period of time, they did find uh, what ultimately led to being their, the, the new STP singer, and they, they pretty much just had to make a decision on which way to go. <clears throat> For them, you know, of course, the right movie was, you know, hey, we've, you know, we have a our life's work, our baby here. It's a, you know, Stone Temple Pilots, a huge successful rock band, uh, which we, we love. And they made the choice to move forward. So we kind of had to shelf the project we were working on indefinitely. And so that was a couple years ago. But uh, Pete and I chose to make lemonade with lemons and, and instead of just going our separate ways and, you know, whining about it or whatever we i called him and said hey man why don't you come back out man we we because we got to know each other a lot better i realized not only is he a great singer lyricist you know through working with him but he's a great guy great guitar player great all-around musician and and not only that we're pretty much cut from the same cloth as far as what we grew up on what we like what we want in a band and all that stuff so he came back out and we wrote and recorded a whole whole mess of stuff and, uh, you know, one of the songs being Tear the Sky Wide Open. And last year, uh, a bunch of time went by. We had some management that didn't work out, and it ate up a, a nice chunk of time. So fast forward to this year, and we got turned on to Golden Robot Records. Mark, the, uh, uh, the president, founder of the label, heard the stuff, totally dug it, and said, let's do it. And we put, the, put an EP together. We took our best stuff, took five songs. I you know, did the mixing and mastering, and I, we had enough time in the spring to get the deal together and do some videos and photos and and you know the artwork and everything. And and uh, I had to I had to go to Japan this summer. I was playing with a you know a band in Japan all summer that I've worked with for many years here and there. And they're like uh, Japan's biggest rock band. It's like kind of like a Aerosmith or Kiss over there. That's how big they are. And uh, went over there and did that. So we had everything lined up prior to me leaving. So when I came home, the single's out, came out in the middle of August, to the sky wide open, and we're, you know, we're promoting and getting it all together. The brand new baby band, but we're excited as anything, and I, I want to see this uh, happen more than anything. Yeah, well, I know it's a big difference between, you know, being a hired hand in a band and having your own baby, you know, something that, you know, if it uh, takes off, you feel that stake in, uh, you know, ownership and creation and, you know, really, the um, the potentials are wide open. Tell us about how important that means to uh, these days work on a project that's uh, you know you're really a part of. Yeah, it's well, it, it, along with just 
you know, being excited about your own little band sitting there, you know, doing your thing. Nobody's aware of it. Nobody knows of it. You, you have an excitement you have to go with. And if, if you believe in it and you see it through and smart about it and just take take your experiences and knowledge and just go go 100%, hopefully something happens. You know, you just got to get exposure and get, uh, you know, get it out there. And it, the main thing is do people dig it, you know, and you just got to gotta make sure uh, it's, it's out there for people to hear. So, with, you know, but with, with that, um, yeah, there's a nice comfort in joining a big band that's established that, you know, maybe you grew up on and it's a part of your life already and now you're in the band. That's great. And uh, in talking about this stuff, it, it does make me realize a, a lot, if not all of those experiences, because I have done other projects on my own over the years none of which have uh, um, became anything that led to long-term or, you know, huge success or whatever. But it's always been something I wanted to do. And uh, when, you, when you are in these bands, whether it's, you know, Foreign or, you know, or working with Slash or, 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 or Whitesnake here, these are guys that I, I grew up, you know, listening to, a huge fan of. And you're watching them run the show, and their life, and, and their their passion it's, it's everything revolves around their passion you know they're, 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 you know everything they do revolves around their whole career is revolving around their love and their passion well same with me you take that and you take it as a, you, you learn from it and you're inspired by it and all, all it really does for me is just say okay you know I'm, I'm working with these guys and this is their world and I'm, I'm going to give them a hundred percent but man you know I'd love to see this happen in my own way where I'm more or less in their shoes, where it is my own music, my own band, so we can call our own shots and control, you know, control things as we want, you know, and, and so it's really just been nothing but inspiration, and it's been a long road of uh, a lot of great experiences, and, and hopefully that road leads me to being able to watch Silverthorne get up to uh, a level where it can sustain itself, and, and I can become, you know, uh, 100% involved, in, in, uh, in my year revolves around Silverthorne's success and getting out there and, you know, gaining fans and writing great music and putting on great shows and becoming a reality and, uh, you know, just like to every, everything I think uh, as, as kids when you're listening to your favorite bands and start to play an instrument, you know, those are all the dreams right there. Oh, I want to do that, you know, so that's, that's where I'm going. That's where, I, that's where I intend on going and being. Absolutely. You know, we uh, all grew up loving those 70s bands and, you know, we hear the elements of you know, Free and Zeppelin and Humble Pie and Cream and everything and, and, and what you're doing. And it seems that those bands really became the blueprint for so many of the bands since then, the 80s, 90s, and since then. Everybody draws from that well. You know, we know those guys drew from the American, you know, blues music and stuff prior to that. But what do you think it was about those bands in the 70s that had such a lasting quality you know you see queen with the big biopic going through the roof and all that music it's so timeless what was it about that era yeah i i, I wish i knew because if i knew i i i do exactly what i know and i'd become that <laughs> it's uh, you know there's so many intangibles and so many factors but but off the top of my head i i think that a lot of it had to do with just just man where where technology, culture were at at the time, late 60s into the 70s. So many things were exploding tech, technology-wise in the studios and live with sound systems, you know, and just bands playing to bigger venues with proper monitors and more badass sound systems. And in the studio, just the, the you know, multi-track recording was just growing at, at such a huge rate. And bands could be inspired by that, take advantage of that. But who knows why we had so much insanely amazing timeless music go on in such a short period of time and rock and roll you know really is still a young a younger style you know from what what is it 1955 i think that's the, that was when it all started right for the most part yeah. but man it's come such a long way you would have never heard styles of music that go on now 30 years ago but yeah the, the, as far as being a blueprint then it really is, you know, all those bands. You can t take almost any band that's huge now, and, I mean, you even see comments like, oh, but Metallica's the Zeppelin of our generation. It's like everything goes back to those huge bands. Uh, if a band's huge now, oh, it's like a Rolling Stones thing, or this guy's like a Hendrix. You know, there's, there's, there's those, those, those pivot points. 
everything kind of pivots back to these certain icons. Uh, anybody that comes out that's a killer, visual, flashy front man with some sort of operatic voice that, that can command an audience, oh, it's like Freddie Mercury. You know what I mean? It's like that. That was the, that's where we go back to. And, you know, there'll be, never be another James Brown or a Prince or something. You know, everything just kind of goes back. But why it happened, I don't know. But I'm glad it did, and I'm glad I'm alive for it because it really was an amazing time. And, you know, who knows? You, you, there's, there's a lot of great bands out now, and, and maybe since, let's say, you know, the late 80s into the, the 90s and stuff, I mean, there are your, your Van Halens, which I know started in the 70s, but, you know, went, went in through the 80s and 90s, and I guess it was really peaking in the 80s or whatever, but, you know, all the way up to, you know, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, then the, the whole Nirvana slash grunge movement, and, you know, but, man, I, I don't really keep up with super current, you know, trends and music styles i mean i see what's going on but I, I i'm still listening to my favorite music that's older and and uh i do like uh, there's a lot of new bands out there i dig a lot but but man i just i don't know i do what, what like i said to somebody else man it's the day where you would turn on a radio station and literally in the span of a couple hours hear songs like roundabout into stairway to heaven into live freebird into uh, carry on wayward son into hotel california it, it, I, the bohemian rhapsody it's like oh my god that that was really like kind of normal and if we heard that now imagine that imagine if one of the bigger bands now came out with something along the lines of a roundabout i know that's prog whatever but still it was a rock song on the radio and with with you know an, an epic rock song and, and into a song from another band that's like in the bait of <laughs> carry on wayward son and then a stairway to heaven into a I mean, that was some insane, insane times for music, for songwriting and bands and, and overall production because that ties in the sounds of bands back then and how organic and pure it was. You knew that was the Who playing Won't Get Fooled Again. It was those four guys. You knew it was the Stones playing Gimme Shelter. You, you know what I mean? You knew it was Steely Dan in the studio doing it. You know, they had their sound. You knew it was, you know... Zeppelin being, it's an amazing time. And now sometimes you hear bands and if you don't really, maybe you know a song from the band, you know, maybe you're, you dig a song or a couple or whatever, and then a new new song comes out and you're maybe not even sure which band it is because so many things sound the, sound the same nowadays. And and there's always formulas, you know, that people follow, but, but now it seems like more so than ever, production and, and how people look at things in the studio, it just it sort of, the out the final product ends up being a little bit you know cookie cutterish you know you know a, a metal or a heavier band has a certain sound there's a certain drum sound a certain production a certain way of uh, mastering with compression that makes it a pop a certain way and and it gets it gets a little bit samey and that's why I still love you know when you you could put on a band uh, just off the top of my head you could put on a whether it's the, the, the Chili Peppers or, or uh, uh, Rival Sons or, or Audio Slave, they they, still, they really sound like themselves. You know, they they, they sound like, and that's and I, I appreciate that more than than uh, a band going in and, and a producer manipulating manipulating them to sound a certain flavor. You know. Yeah, the bands had a had a freedom. You know, the labels weren't you know trying to dissect and you know, guess what a hit was, and FM Freeform Radio was beginning, so they weren't just looking for the single, they were going deep, you know, on the albums and really playing multiple songs by a band, so definitely a di different era, but uh, I know you do the Bonzo Bash, you know, every year, and, you know, what, what kind of influence has John Bonham been on what you do? Um, yeah, it's a... Uh... Uh, more, more more of an influence than any other drummer uh, from the time I became aware of him up to today. Uh, it was really that important to me. But but anything I say about John Bonham is really nothing new. You're, you're going to talk to just about any rock drummer, and they're, they're pretty much 99 out of 100 drummers are going to say the same thing I'm saying. He just had that impact. He was the guy that became that guy. You know, somebody had to do it, and he did it. And he did it within that time period that we're talking about, you know, and when you, you, things were, you know, so much so much stuff was you know, was groundbreaking. And uh, he broke ground, he, he, he laid a foundation, and, and uh, it's still, you know, everything's measured this day by, you know, to, by, by what he had has done. 
and man, it's it's on every level of 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 drums, you know, from from how he plays in a band to the tone to the groove to the you know, the sound, the, the the licks, the beats, the the tastiness, you know, the, the whole big picture. It's just it's all there, and uh, that that was a uh, something that never left left me. And and uh, I'm a fan of tons of drummers. There's so many drummers I, I I'm inspired and influenced by, and uh, but he's the number one guy, and. Uh, yeah, it just stayed with me forever and uh, led to the Bonzo Bash stuff, which was really just a, a, a simple little idea of just something that sounded fun to me. It was There was no big, I'm going to start this uh, thing I want to do every year. I'm going to carry it on and focus on it. It was just an idea of having to rent a studio, you know, get a rehearsal room and put a, put a, a set of, you know, Bonzo type drums in there and, and uh, get your friends to be the band and call all the drummers you know and say, come on down, man, we're going to have a party. It really was that simple. And and by by thinking that, it was like, well, if, if I really did that, and, you know, being in L.A., there's, you know, friends with a lot of drummers and there's a lot of drummers around, and, man, if all these drummers showed up and we did do that, that's that's pretty cool. But if, but if we got to that, why would I want to leave it at that? Maybe the drummers would want to play in front of an audience and it would make it more special. Maybe this is something uh, an audience would like to see, see all these well-known drummers from different bands get on the same kit and, and pay their respects to John Bonham and have a, have a blast to pick their favorite Zep song and play it with the house band. You know, it sounded like a pretty cool idea, which I rolled with. And and, and fortunately, uh, my, my partner in the show, Joe, Joe Sutton, is a, was a Hollywood promoter was working at this play, uh, this venue, the Key Club, which is a great venue. I had played tons of times, and he called me about a show he was doing. Okay, hey, this is what I'm doing. You want to, you know, it's, you know, we were talking about, you know, what I was, I was the drummer in this event, and uh, I was like, maybe I could just throw this idea his way and see what he thinks, you know, because I hadn't talked to anybody about it. And then he said, that sounds pretty, pretty damn cool, man. Uh, and I said, well, you know, that the uh, anniversary of Bonham's passing. This was in 2010. It was, it's. It's coming up. It's September 25th, 2010. is the 30th anniversary of his passing. And he said, I literally have that night. It was a Saturday night. Of all nights, it was a Saturday night because I have that night on hold when I don't have a, a, an event. If this is probably four months prior, like in May or something. So he double-checked at the place. They said, yeah, cool, go for it. You know, of course, they say, well, you know, it can't just be a bunch of, you know, locals playing Zep tunes. You know, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be special. So, you know, of course, I, I started making calls and, Anybody that was available said yes, and then some guys I didn't even know re- reached out. You know, it was, and it was such a such a great night uh, on so many levels, and and that was just a it was just a little bit of a, a labor of love and a, and a fun idea. Like, okay, I'm home. I have some, I have some time. This is cool, and it ended up being being really cool in, in more ways than just a drum event. You know, it's it's cool in many ways, but it opened up uh, me to being uh, having to be an organizer, the ringleader, and keeping everything, you know, everything flowing and smooth and making sure that everything's dialed in and organized and the guy, anybody involved is a good time, you know, no matter what's going on behind the scenes. So the first show was pretty, <coughs> excuse me, pretty, you know, pain-free and, uh, you know, uh, problem-free, you know, it was pretty smooth. It's just, you know, a lot of preparation to keep it together. But, you know, over the years, had a lot of great shows. We brought it to the East Coast, New York and New Jersey and Long Island, uh, it's been, you know, it's, we went to Moscow with it and at its music convention in Moscow a few years ago, you know, so it's really cool to see that it got, it, it, you know, and that, that just kind of got my name around, not, not only as a drummer. It's like, okay, this guy actually can put a show on and people, people have a good time at it and, then, uh, performing or, or, you know, being in, in the audience, you know, so it's, it's been really cool, but that's all. At the end of the day, it's all about John Bonham. You know, you, you get wrapped up in the show, and it becomes like you know your focus is making the show run smoothly. But when you take a step back, you go, yeah, "I'm doing this because John Bonham rules." You know. Yeah, I mean, such a force that the day he died, the mighty Led Zeppelin called it a day. I mean, that's quite something that they would not even consider. You know, replacing the drummer and carrying on that legacy. It, it, yeah, it, and you know. Could they have? Yes, it has been done with front men, a la Van Halen, a la ACDC, which those are I mean, those are huge shoes to fill. I mean, you, you know, really, it's it's and and it's definitely not taking anything away away from John Bonham at all. It's just you know, it it, it is possible to do it, but when those three 
surviving members get together and go, oh, do we really want to? There, we, we felt something so heavy with John Bonham being behind us and being a, part, you know, a quarter of the band. I don't know. They, they obviously said, I don't know if it's worth it. If, if, if what we deliver with maybe a, a new member isn't where we were, you know, what, what are we, do, what are we saying? Are we, you know, are we just, what are we doing it for? Obviously they, none of them needed to uh, uh, do it for the money, you know? So it's like, are we, are we going to, is this really going to be worth it? You know? And, and, obviously it wasn't you know yeah well the legacy uh, carries on and of course you do the remembering Randy Rhodes and all that is so so special for everybody involved now with the Silverthorne project is the full album recorded or are you still working on that uh, it, it's well we're releasing an EP and yes that is that's done as they say, it's in the can, and the artwork's done. It's mastered. It's all. It's all sitting there now. The, the main thing is, when is the best time to release it? Which we have uh, a solid idea about, but uh, you're, it's sort of when you when you release a single, and you're a brand new band, no history, nobody knows you. You come out, and you go, here we are. Okay, you know, you know, you're going to have a lot of work ahead of you, and you know, it's not going to be this instantaneous from you know from the bottom up here we here we are touring you know and tons of fans and the, everything's record selling and you know it's you know, we know it we know what it takes and it's baby steps and it's a baby band <clears throat> so we're learning as we go and and uh the, the next step really is uh, there's gonna be a second single out next month and soon after the ep it's just as we get closer to the end of the, of the year you always have to consider end of year holidays when offices shut down how many people are really going to be focusing on new releases well i don't care that it's close to the holidays because it's not like any major releases from huge artists are going to affect a band like us you know anybody that's aware of our release and wants to get it is going to buy it doesn't matter if it's the week before christmas or the week after uh it doesn't matter if you know the, the five biggest artists in the world are releasing christmas records and you know, and, you know greatest hits records that's not gonna that's not gonna affect us you know it's it won't, won't have any bearing it's just more or less can it's it's not more or less it's more it will will we be able to have the right promotion at that point in time you know is it better to do it before christmas or is it better to do it uh you know soon after so that's what we're figuring out me personally i want to get it out sooner than later for sure. Uh, so I want the single, second single to come out, which I, I can't wait for people to hear because if anybody listening has, has heard the, the first single, Tear the Sky Wide Open, and you dig it, well, great. You're not going to get a second Tear the Sky Wide Open. You're just going to get the same guys writing another song that sounds nothing like Tear the Sky Wide Open, but it more or less features uh, Pete Shoulder on vocals, meaning it's just such a freaking great great vocal it's probably our favorite song of everything we have and and uh I'm, I'm excited because as i'm excited that we're out and there's a single out it's like we've heard it we've we've you know sort of been there and done that i want people to have a second song and hopefully get the same reaction if not 10 or 100 times better and just have a couple songs now you know and and, and know that soon after that the five song ep will be out and and hopefully at that point we have done our behind the scenes homework and set up everything neat that needs to be set up and have some nice options out there to get in front of people. Yeah, well, we've been hearing more and more about Golden Robot. I know, um, you know, um, more and more American artists are, are, are signing there. I know Gilby Clark's got a record coming out through them, and, you know, we're uh, excited to see what they can do. You know, with so many people coming out through Frontiers, it's good to see other options and other opportunities, you know, to bring out new music. Now, in in today's market, the, the, the good thing about you know, you know what I'm what I've grown to know and learned about Golden Robot and just being there is they really are about longevity and and uh, a lot of there's a lot of uh, one offs coming out, you know, where you, you'll have a lot of records come out and you know maybe those people that are fans that want to see it live but that either that's not going to happen because the, guy, the guys involved have other bands or other schedules uh or there's just they just don't feel it's it's enough of uh, a priority to put that time into and uh, with with golden robot they they one of the first things they said is we we don't want it to be a one-off and then you're busy 
in some other band and you're not even available because you've committed to some other stuff. And uh, our reaction was, no, man, are you kidding me? Uh, what we want is for this to become the priority. That's what we want. And when you know a label wants that, as opposed to, cool, man, we dig it, we're going to get it out, throw some promotion behind it, and then we also have, you know, 50 other releases where we've got to get out and do the same thing, too. That's not, that wouldn't be too reassuring to me, <laughs> wanting to see my band become full-time. You know what I mean? So, it was, you know, with, with, with Golden Robot, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that they're, they're looking at music in that way, you know, and they... they, they, they they come from this, uh, a similar interest of, you know, just loving classic rock and loving bands that, you know, have have history and are going to make history and create history and, 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 and dig into it and become that rather than just throw something out there as a project. You know, this is, this is definitely not a project. But with all that said, to make it something that's not just a project, it's got to have, it's got to, have uh, you know everything it needs behind it and be given a chance you know and I, I can't just magically uh, call a phone number or or uh, go online and fill out a form and, and be on the next biggest tours and open for the next you know the biggest bands and the best festivals you know it, it, it takes a lot and it takes you know sort of who you know what you know and who reacts to it you know and that's that's yeah, there's so many levels of that you know it could be from fans to other bands to, to management to agents you know, it just takes all of that falling in place and, and to give you that shot to get out there and prove yourself. And <clears throat> I hope uh, I hope we get that chance because I'm not I'm not worried about proving ourselves. That's one thing I know for sure. Uh, we we, we want to get out there. I know how we're going to sound. I know what we can do. And it's you know if you you know if you if you just if you're into hard powerful rock and roll, you know played by real musicians, no bullshit behind us, just getting up there and doing it and throwing down and, and hopefully you catch you, 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 what, what you're viewing and hearing but you know, excites you, that, that's what we're going for. You know, we're going for that, the realness, as real as it can be. You know, that's, it's pretty simple. As real as it can be, just like if you went and bought a ticket to go see The Who, and I'm not comparing ourselves to The Who, I'm just saying when you did buy a ticket to The Who or, Qu or Queen, that's what you're getting. You're getting those, those four guys on stage, and what you're watching and seeing is, becomes entirely from them, you know? Well, I know you're realistically looking at that and, and, and knowing that ultimately, you know, the band's got to perform live. You're going to have to, you know, get those, um, you know, friends in high places to put you on that stage. Um, in, any ideas so far when the first performance would be? Uh, um, yeah, I think what, what makes sense right now, being that we're basically in October, is, is to... Uh, just books, get, get your feet wet. Get out there and play. It doesn't matter for how many. It's the fact that you're out there playing. It's got it's to happen. It's got to start somewhere. You're definitely not going to sit around and, and say we're not doing anything until some big tour comes up or some, uh, you know, some like you said, friend in high place offers you something. You know, you, you can't wait for that. You have to, you have to you know, create, create a little movement on your own. So we're going to, you know, start out by in, in November trying to get, you know, Get, play a little bit in LA and Vegas because you know myself and Daniel, bass player, are here. Pete's in the UK, and it only it makes sense to me. And from what I've been seeing online and stuff, and uh, there's been a lot of good press and, and reviews and stuff, and just coverage of the band in the UK. And I'm like, that's awesome because yeah, I love going over there, and I would love to even just do a little club run. I mean, that's that's exciting to me, and you know. It, it's it's really that simple. Get out there, and play here, play in LA, play play uh, play a little bit in UK, and this is all while you know the second singles going on and the EP's coming out. And you, you just have to make a, you know, you have to put some ripples in the water, and uh, you know that's just another way of, of uh, creating awareness. You know, people come out and talk, and hopefully you get some good reviews and do press while you're doing it. You know, good do as much as you can. You know, and, and enjoy it. Enjoy the fact that you know you're at this point because there was a point where. Pete and I had this music and nobody heard it. A couple friends, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's cool, man. You know, and and you know, great. And there you are with another little idea sitting there, and it's going nowhere. But we were sitting there, unsure of if if we'd get a deal, unsure of if this could even get to me sitting here being interviewed by you, you know. And and it did. So we're so it's right now in our little graph. <laughs> everything's moving forward. You know what I mean? We could be sitting here still trying to send music to people that are either not getting back to you or are not interested. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Well, we'll certainly be at the first shows. And in closing, Brian, what, what advice do you have to the young bands and players coming up? I know it could take hours to, to school them on all that you know, but what basic advice do you give them to anyone to have a, have a shot at, at, at finding that unique sound or having any kind of you know, opportunity in today's business? Oh, man, it's, it starts with, if you love it, do it. That's what, that's, that's, it's as simple as that. If you love playing an instrument, you love playing music, and you, it, it, and it's at the forefront of your mind. I, I really don't, my whole life is, revolves around musicians and music and bands and the whole business, and um, that's all I know, that's, and that's all I've thought since I've, got behind a drum kit. I, I just knew I have to do this. And as a, as a little kid, you have no clue of what you're thinking. You're just looking at your posters of Kiss and cranking Aerosmith records and playing along, you know, you, and going, those guys are rock stars and I want to I want to do this and, and I love this. And if you have that and you know nothing else is as important, then put your time in. Put your time into... Well, I say songwriting. First, learn how to play your, your instrument. And I'm not saying everybody has to be the next Eddie Van Halen uh, at all, you know, but there's, that's, that doesn't hurt at all. But put your time in and, and you know, find people that are like-minded. And, and then it really comes down to don't expect anything. Just go for everything. That's it. Don't, don't expect anything. And you will be happy every time somebody says they liked either your band live or a song or compliments you on your, you know, your talent, whatever it is, it's all, it's, 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 and I say it when I'm teaching drums, it's like, you might not need to know, um, to do what you want to do on the drums, you might not need to know every little technical thing I'm showing you, but I'll tell you, if you get some of these things together, it's going to give you that extra confidence, and then when you go back to playing what you, let's say you're in a cover band, or you're playing this style of music, you're going to play with more confidence. When you have more confidence, it just keeps you more pumped up. It keeps you you moving forward because there are those times where it's 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 hard. You can get down. You know, oh man, I'm I, either I got to work or I'm not in a band or yeah, I, I think I suck. I don't like how I play. You know, like that that stuff can bring you down. It's easy. Nobody has to even it, it, nobody has to say anything to you. You can do it yourself. You know, so you gotta you gotta just keep that passion at the forefront of your mind and the drive. And and it's much easier to do before you get tied down to tons of responsibilities. And so I'm saying when you're younger, if you know you want this, you know, make it your priority. And and you really have to be, you know, uh, uh, single-minded. You know what I mean? You just have have to be just uh, self-centered in a way. You you have to be really thinking about yourself and going, I can't, can't think on too many other things because this is what I want. And if, and and I have to do this myself, you know, so, I can't tell you, you know, a lot of people I hear say, you know, start your own band, write your own music. Yeah, that, that's great. And, and everybody can do that, get your own band, write your own music. But as a band, you might not write music that, that's that great on whatever level. You, you know, it might be that. You might not be a songwriter, but you might be a great guitar player. You might be a, a great singer, you know, and you might end up getting hired into, into all these different opportunities. And, and that could be your path, you know. But whatever it is, you just have to expect, don't expect much in the beginning, and expect to have nothing for a while, but you will be happy every every forward step along the way. You will, you know, it will be even more satisfying, especially when you're working a sucky job and you're broke, and 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 you you know there's one thing you want to do. You know, it's 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 just dedication to your passion and your and your craft, man. You know, the better you are as a player, the more well-rounded, the more the more opportunities. You know, I I, I wouldn't. If I could only play one style of drums, yes, I'm a rock drummer, but if I could only play this kind of rock drumming, and that was my limit, I wouldn't be able to go from, uh, you know, doing gigs with, uh, I don't know, from one of the band, you know, I wouldn't be able to go from like a, a Don Felder, who I played a bunch of gigs with, and what, what's required of in a drummer in, in a setting with Don Felder, to playing with, with Ozzy or something. They're, they're, it's different, you know, it's a whole different thing. Yeah, you know, I would never play drums how I play with, with when I play with Ozzy or even or White Snake. I wouldn't do that with a uh, Don Felder. It's a different, different, different vibe, and you have to be sympathetic to that. And, and that's how you get work, you know. And, and I just, oh, that's to me, that's simple because I I grew up playing the records, and when I played the records, I would try and imitate what I heard. And to do that, you have to 
play a little differently here and there. You can play to a Rush record. It's not the same as playing to a Van Halen record. You know what I mean? Well, Brian Tishy's been our guest. Silverthorn is the new group. The website, silverthornband.com. And Tear the Sky Wide Open's the new single. Brian, it's a pleasure as always. Can't wait to see those shows and be there uh, to support the next music coming out. Thanks so much for joining us. All right, well, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it.